the new Red Green Show! Coming to you directly from Possum Lodge, where every day's like taking a vacation. From reality, that is. Here he is, the star of our show, my uncle Red Green! Thank you, thank you. This is a real exciting day up the lodge. First day of trout season. Oh, <laughs> I hate trout season. I hate that. Fishing shows make for bad television. Harold, this is a fishing show. It is? Yeah. <laughs> well, that explains the ratings. <laughs> Okay, well, you picture this, Uncle Red. You and a bunch of guys sitting in a canoe waiting for a trout to bite a rubber minnow. Not exactly visual dynamic imagery. All right, Harold, picture this. You wearing a paper hat making french fries. <laughs> show you how to make a tackle box, one that you can actually wear. Ranger Gord has made sandwiches. I don't ask, I really don't want to know. And then Mike is going to try to relate his prison experience to reality, and Dougie tells us how to get women. Another stretch. Well, trout fishing season started at 6 o'clock this morning. We've already had our first arrest. <laughs> Before the sun was even up, Bob Stuyvesant from the Ministry of Natural Resources find Junior Singleton and confiscated his fishing equipment. All of his equipment? Woo! He traded a 78 Buick LeSabre for that stuff. No, 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 not his fishing gear, just the aircraft lights. <laughs> aircraft lights? Yeah, Junior had mounted aircraft lights on the end of the boat, pointing down into the water. Is that illegal? Yeah, yeah, it's called unfair advantage, because oh. bright lights attract fish. And government agents. <laughs> so is Junior in a lot of trouble? Well, now, that's between Junior and the Ministry of Natural Resources. Oh, well, where do you get the aircraft landing lights? That's between Junior and the Ministry of Transportation. <laughs> Mind you, airplanes shouldn't fly at night anyway. Too dangerous. Well, it is now. <laughs> Later on in the show, Bill and I are going to do a little practice casting, getting ready for the big fishing. Oh, boy. <laughs> Dropped everything, Bill, your sinkers and everything. Look at this. Pick them all I'm up. Oh, oh Bill. Got all the lures snagged into you there. I guess you caught yourself. <laughs> I'm not gonna clean you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the big one. For two solid hours with a wrecking ball from McClintic Salvage. Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Hammer to say this word. <laughs> 30 seconds. <sighs> Begin. All right, uh, Mike, uh, promise. Death threat? <laughs> Dedication. Habitual offender? Conviction. Appeal? Um, honor. Amongst thieves? Now, 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 Mike, when a man and woman pledge their loyalty, that's called making a... Conjugal visit. She had a rifle on her dresser, a shotgun on the floor, a pistol in her pillow, and an Uzi by the door. She had enough artillery to start a conflagration, and when she threw her arms around you, you were pretty much there for the duration. <laughs> well, with this being the start of trout season, I got out my fishing gear. There's a lot of it, but hey, I need it all. Because when I go, I want to stay gone. I don't want to have to keep going home for another hook or more bait or another fishing rod or magazines or ice or beverages or sandwiches or my eight tracks or in fact <laughs> any of my fishing gear. So I thought this week on Handyman Corner, I'm going to show you how we can make a pair of hip waders that will hold all of your fishing equipment. Hopefully, you'll never have to step on dry land again. Now, the prime component in this system is one of these kids' wading pools. I got this one from Junior Singleton because there's a hole in it that happened during a particularly competitive game of lawn darts. <laughs> All right, first thing you want to do is you got to cut a hole in the middle of the bottom that's the same circumference you are in the middle of your bottom. I can't be right. <laughs> I'll just round it off. Once 
once you got the hole cut the size of you, then you duct tape some shoulder straps in there made of duct tape. Then just pull the whole unit up onto your shoulders. That's why they call them shoulder straps. <laughs> and there we go. Now we're gonna have to separate this uh, whole pool thing into little compartments. And for that, I suggest a piece of the vinyl siding. You know, you can, you can get this, uh, or just peel it off of somebody's house, you know, while something else loud is going on, like, say, an electrical storm. Just be sure to wear rubber soled shoes. <laughs> now you wanna bend this to fit inside here and make all the compartments. I suppose you could measure this, but who has that kind of time? <laughs> separated into compartments here, keep everything kind of separate there. And as you can see, I got my favorite pop here on ice. I got the bait in this area. Got myself some sandwiches uh, put here and uh, got some small tools over in this area. You never know when you're gonna need them. Uh, and you notice I've added some signs so you can tell what's what because I'll tell you on a hot day, maybe it rains a little bit by the sun beating down there. It gets very difficult to tell the bait from the tuna casserole. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was not a fun day. No wonder the fish weren't biting. <laughs> and around the back here, I got my first aid, my magazine. All right, all right I, can't, I can't seem to access the stuff in the back, so we have what we call a design flaw. This is gonna take a major rethink. All right, you get yourself a hard hat, drive a spike up through that. We've all done it down the other way a few times, haven't we? <laughs> all right, then uh, take a roll of duct tape, stick that on as your bearing. Probably a lot of you have noticed that uh, this is not really a hard hat, this is an army helmet. I got it from the Possum Lodge Little Theater Group when uh, All Quiet on the Western Front bombed. <laughs> well, maybe bomb is a little strong. Self-destructed, a little more accurate. Then I uh, added some strapping, so these are a little bit longer. I got a hole right at the crisscross. You try to get that up and line her up with the, with the spike, get that right in there. And there you go, huh, huh? 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 Look at that. Huh? Huh? <laughs> now we're fishing. Just like a lazy Susan, I haven't seen her since grade school. So remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. I'm going fishing. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Stay tuned as Ranger Gord gives the fire tower a coat of paint. Stuyvesant from the Ministry of Natural Resources has just arrested Stinky Peterson. <laughs> it's the first day of trout season and the only thing reeled in are Possum Lodge members. <laughs> Does Stinky qualify as a largemouth or a sucker? <laughs> Walleye, actually. <laughs> Stinky was fishing up at Rock Reef Point by chucking sticks of dynamite into the water. Apparently that's illegal too, Harold. Oh, wow, yeah, you know, oh, they're so strict about those kind of things, you know. Yeah, it seems you're not allowed to catch unarmed fish with, uh, with uh, explosives or nuclear weapons. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's put a damper on sport fishing everywhere. Right? Is that sarcasm, Harold? Sound like sarcasm. Not if I have to explain it. <laughs> Is it sarcasm or not? Go fish. <laughs> You know, Red, ladies and gentlemen, an important part of the forest ranger's job is rescuing lost campers and hikers. You know, the forest is our friend, but a lot of people will enter the forest unaware of its potential dangers. Babes in the woods, right, Guard? Babes? Yeah. There's babes here? No. I... Babes! No, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ow, ow! Woo! Babes, babes, babes! <laughs> Where? Now, Gord, it's just an expression, actually. You know, getting back to your, your earlier statement there, you've been up here 16 years. Exactly how many people have you rescued from the woods in that time? Uh, you mean all together, uh, in, a, in a bunch? Yeah, all yeah. Together? Well, how many, roughly, you know? Uh, total, all totaled up? Yeah, all totaled. Uh, well, the, I don't think the numbers are important, Red. Right? Really. So it's those none, is it? Uh, yeah, no, but I'm ready. Oh. Um, like here, for, for example, I have a nice light sandwich table, okay? And it's oh. light because, you know, somebody's been lost in the woods oh. for weeks on end, and you give them a heavy meal, an empty stomach, and you know what happens. What? <gasps> Boom! <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, all right, Gord, all right. We understand, Gord. Fine. You see that? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, now, I'm even going to cut the crusts Put off your here. your fingers there. Yeah? To make them even more digestible. Oh, yeah, they look great. Yeah? yeah. Thanks. Now, over here, I have a nice punch uh, for a bit of a mixer. 
Okay? Wow. Yeah. Like, we'll pass out the name tags, get to know each other, where you're from, uh, what you do for a living, uh, how many people in your party presume dead, uh, <laughs> how many people you know personally, like, really know. How many? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, of course, it's time for uh, Ranger Gord's chili, and all I can say is, thank goodness we're outside for that one. <laughs> <laughs> then it's uh, time for tea and dessert. Um, and then to help them assimilate back into civilization, we'll play a little charade. It's a comforting game, you know? Charade? Yeah. No, oh, Gord, Gord, Gord. You got Gord, Gord. You got people out there in the woods. They haven't had food or any shelter or anything for a long while. They could have medical problems, Gord. There could be dehydration there, hypothermia. It might take them a full week just to get back on their feet. A week? Yeah, a week. That's what I'm saying. Wow. <laughs> a week out here. Whoa, geez. We could, uh, we could have campfires, make gimp bracelets, sing songs, uh, panty raids. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Who am I kidding? Nobody ever gets lost around here. Well, I don't know, Gordon. You seem pretty much out there to me. <laughs> Welcome to Harold's Handicrafts, where crafty hands make handy crafts. <laughs> okay, today we're going to be making a, um, a, a handsome country kitchen clock. <laughs> All right, but well, first, as always, step one. You gather up, you know, some scraps of wood, like that, that'll be these, and then you and you nail them together, and you get yourself a lovely housing for, for the clock mechanism. Alrighty, so you just, you, well, you, you take a couple and you you're gonna nail them together, and that'll be the actual clock housing. We won't use that one. <laughs> That's gonna die. There, huh. isn't that attractive? <laughs> Well, we're just gonna let that glue dry. And now, uh, now it's time to work on the clock mechanism. And for that, you're gonna have to buy a kit. That's in here. And there's, oh, there's everything in here. These things are great. Look at that. You got the, the windings, and there's a, some, uh, a, a dark thing, and, and stuff. It's like, look at all that stuff. And that's exactly what you need. You have to buy these. So, whoa, okay. <laughs> With everything you're going to possibly need in here. Except the instructions. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay because we can only hope that it's logical. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. A lovely country clock face. <laughs> and of course, there's, there's, you have all the mechanisms. That's, that's intricate. We won't get into that this week. Alrighty, and then you simply insert the clock mechanism into the previously constructed housing. Alrighty, there you have it, your very own country clock. <laughs> and you know, the best part is, you made it yourself. Hi, Ranger Gord again. You know, every year comes spring, it comes time to paint the old fire watch tower. And a lot of people might say, boy, Ranger Gord, that sounds like a lot of work painting all those stairs. But in fact, it's not that bad. Here, let me show you. First, we'll start with a primer coat. <laughs> Great, and once that's done, we'll start with the first coat. Looks like we need a second coat here. There we go. Job's done. Oh, gee, sorry, Red. I didn't see you coming up there. <laughs> I mean, I'm all for law and order, but this red tape is killing the sport. Everybody's ticked off. Even the guys on the Spanish trawler are thinking of leaving. <laughs> the cops picked up Moose Thompson for poisoning fish. Poisoning fish? Why would he do that? Who wants to eat poisoned fish? Well, he uses benzene, Harold, so it all kind of burns off when you cook it, you know? <laughs> Tastes like the fish was cooked in wine, Australian wine. <laughs> what does it matter with you guys? Why don't you just fish the normal way? Oh, really? 
Well, Buster Hatfield was fined and arrested, and he was fishing with a hook and a line. A hook and a line was all he had. A grappling hook and a high-tension power line. <laughs> Anybody using a metal lure had most of their body hair burned off. <laughs> Well, so what? People pay good money to have their body hair removed. <laughs> what happens if I lose my eyebrows and they don't grow back? Well, then you could be a female impersonator instead of a male impersonator. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the casting contest, Bill and I are getting... Well, that's a heck of a lure you got on there, Bill. Bill and I are getting ready to just uh, kind of warm up our skills and everything. We had a little uh, bucket there. And, uh, uh, it was close. It was close. It was pretty close. Okay. Yeah, it was close. It was close. You give it a try there, big man. No, not that way. Oh, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> well, there's an unusual technique, eh? So he tries her again. Right in. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. No, Bill. No. Oh. <laughs> you know, this is something you really should do on your own, I think. Especially when you're with Bill. Now, of course, his reel's all jammed up there because he bought the whole rod and reel kit for 99 cents. Brand new. So he's got an idea. What are you doing? Can I get something else? What are you doing? What's nothing in there? There's no fishing gear in there. That's a, that's the van. There's no fishing gear in there yet. You dumb, big. What are you doing? What's going on? What are you doing there? That's a wrench. What are you got a wrench in the gear? What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What do you got there? What do you got? That's my starting motor. <laughs> what do you doing my starting motor? What's the plan? Oh, he's gonna he's gonna use that as a fishing reel. Later that day, the sun came out and everything, and he's got an old. Oh, oh my gosh, he got a hold of that one, didn't he? Look at that baby go. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Oh, look up to the wires there, Bill. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh, he's got the steel line on there, too. Hey, how's that feel? <laughs> oh boy, and of course, what happens now is, uh, unfortunately, I guess, the starting motor started up and started winding the line in, and, uh, and Bill's gone. Pulling. He's not winding the line in, actually. He's winding Bill up to the line. Oh my gosh, look out, look out, look out, look out, look out, Bill, look out, Bill, Bill. Oh. <laughs> Gosh, that was, that was, <laughs> and, up he, <laughs> and up he goes, but, uh, hey, all's well that ends well. Oh. Look at that. Should have seen the one that got away. <laughs> Stay tuned while I make a few adjustments to my fish finder. Well, I've had it. Bob Stuyvesant has just confiscated all my fishing equipment right out of my boat. My rod, my reels, my line, my hooks, my lures, the whole shebang. What would give him the right to come over there and take my stuff? His stuff. You borrowed it from him last year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay, okay. Well, I'll tell you this. If the government had their way, you know what fishing would be? Sitting in a boat with a rod and a reel and a lure waiting for some fish to come along and bite it. That's not a sport. That's gambling. <laughs> well, why don't you guys use, like, legal fishing equipment? You know, like a fish finder. You know what I'm going to do? Use a fish finder? Use a fish finder. Sure. I should have thought of this before. You know why I didn't? Because I didn't mention it? Because I waste all my time arguing with you all day. I'm not going to do that anymore, Harold. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the show. And on this week's portion of the experts, we have experts, my Uncle Red, and of course, his good friend, Mr. Dougie Franklin. <laughs> okay, here we go. First letter goes as follows. Dear experts, huh, huh? I find a certain woman very attractive, and she seems nice. But whenever I talk to her, she makes a face like she smells something burning. And then she jumps into a taxi. What's the deal? Sign Mr. Lonely. Well, not much to go on there, Harold. <laughs> Mr. Lonely could be Mr. Loser. <laughs> or maybe the woman's just playing hard to get. Well, no, Ray. It's been my experience. Women don't play hard to get. They are hard to get. <laughs> you don't just walk up to a woman and start a conversation. You drive up. When there's a hint bold as brass in that letter, she got into a taxi. Hint, hint. Get yourself a set of wheels. <laughs> what, like, like your monster truck, Mr. Franklin? <laughs> Because I, you know, personally, I find that, you know, completely inappropriate. Well, don't you go kidding yourself, Harold. Women love a monster truck. They love the power. They love the size. Women love all that rubber. 
What about the eye contact, though, Dougie? You know, you're up the monster truck there. You know, don't you need something shorter like a van or a pickup truck? Make you have that eye-to-eye -eye thing that they recommend in those magazines that Bernice buys. You're on something there, Red. If you take that thought just a little bit farther, it might behoove you when you go to buy your vehicle to get one that puts you right at eye level of whatever it is you want to be looking at, you know, while you're talking to it. <laughs> Catch my drift. And another thing, power windows. Power windows. Women love a man that can drive up smooth as can be, raise and lower his windows without cranking and wheezing. <laughs> you know what? Makes them think you're good with your hands. <laughs> Problem, Uncle Red? This fish finder is useless, Harold. Maybe it's just a loose wire. Is it covered by warranty? <laughs> Was it covered by warranty? <laughs> I told everybody that fish finders were illegal, so everybody goes up and buys a fish finder or borrowed one or stole one or whatever. But we were monitoring every cubic inch of Possum Lake. We would see every single fish in the lake. Nobody saw anything, nothing. Completely blank screens. And Stinky Peterson told us what was going on. Bob Stuyvesant and the Ministry of Natural Resources must have been sending out some kind of jamming signal. We weren't getting anything. So, so Uncle Red, maybe just let me get this straight. Not one fish finder was registering fish. No, sir. Okay, now before they had their dynamite and poison and high voltage power lines confiscated, did even even one lodge member catch a fish? No. What's your point? There are no fish in Possum Lake. Possum Lake is fishless. <laughs> Golly, that's a relief. Huh? <laughs> Relief? No, no, Possum Lake is completely lifeless, Uncle Red. Boy, here, I thought my fish finder was broken. <laughs> all right, it is broken, but I mean, it makes me feel a lot better about having all the equipment confiscated, I'll tell you that. And actually, when you think about it, <laughs> this is kind of a joke on, on Bob Stuyvesant. He took away all our stuff to protect the fish, and there aren't any. <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> It's meeting time, yeah. Uncle Ray. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold, okay? Oh, Don't tell the guys about the no fish. I want to give them the good news. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy, I love tart season. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after. I won't be bringing the big mess of fish or anything, but I'll tell you what to do. I'll stop off at the takeout place there, you know, and that way we don't have to cut the heads off or cut the tails off or pull all the guts out unless I go to the cheap place. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of Harold, myself, and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, except for the fish, thanks for watching, and keep your stick on you guys. I just found out that I intercepted a message. The Ministry of Transportation is coming up here and he's going to do a surprise inspection. So if anybody asks anybody that thing on the side of the steering wheel, it's called an indicator. Just say it with me. Indicator.